Narcissists study you and then find creative ways to push your buttons and step over your boundaries. This is especially true for the covert vindictive narcissist who employs plausible deniability actions and victim mode to escape accountability for their abuse. Overreacting to what you say or do is a favorite technique. They constantly take things the wrong way, twist the meaning of your words, reword what you said to make it to their advantage, or just react totally inappropriately to what was said or done. An overt narcissist may blow up when you dare tell them something they do not agree with. Thus, they create fear in you of how they will react. The vulnerable narcissist is often too spineless to take you on directly, so they overreact in other ways to make you fearful of how something you said will be taken. They also create the feeling of guilt in you. They can make you feel guilty for complaining about them abusing you. The covert narcissist often loves to punish themselves or others, especially your children, to make you feel bad. Say a comment that you like an outfit of theirs, but you love another outfit more. Next thing you know, they break down in tears that you think they look ugly or that their outfit is ugly, thereby overreacting or misunderstanding what you said. They may twist your words to their needs, such as responding with, Oh, so this outfit is not good enough for you. Oh, so I don't look good unless I'm in that outfit? Or they can say nothing and the next thing you see, the outfit is in the trash. If you ask what is going on, they may respond with, Well, you said you hated it. Nutrition is often a big thing. Mention that you read that instant noodles are not that healthy. Next thing you know, the noodles get thrown away and the kids get told they can never ever eat noodles again because you don't want to allow them to eat it. Now the kids are angry with you for taking the instant noodles away when it was a narcissist. The narcissist totally overreacted to your discussion. You may have only mentioned that it is unhealthy. Now you will have to either go along with being a bad person and tyrant for not allowing the kids to ever eat noodles again, or you have to backtrack and say that no, the noodles is not that bad, eating it now and again is okay, just not almost every meal. It doesn't matter what you choose, both options will be held against you later. If you do backtrack, then it will be held against you the next time you do want to point to something unhealthy. The narcissist may comment, Oh, remember how you said the noodles was so bad and it actually wasn't? Even if you do not backtrack, it will also be held against you. Mention that maybe the kids eat too much chocolate and the narcissist will explode. They may call the kids and then proclaim that now you will not allow the kids to ever eat one piece of chocolate in their life. Before you can say something, they may cut back at you and say, I wonder how healthy the things are that you eat. Now you're defending what you eat without addressing the kids' fear that they can never eat a piece of chocolate again. If you do later allow the kids to eat chocolate again, the kids will start to think that they cannot trust what you tell them, for you keep on changing your mind. In time, you will become so afraid to share any information with a narcissist or criticize anything they do for fear they will overreact. This is especially effective against you when they decide to blow up in public or have a full-on meltdown in front of others while sobbing you never allow them to do anything or appreciate anything they do for you. Soon you will be walking on eggshells whenever you talk to them, especially in public. They often have no shame of embarrassing themselves as long as it gets to you. Say they want to order the most expensive dish in the restaurant and you complain that money is tight. They may explode and yell that you are so controlling that you do not even allow them to eat what they want. They may storm out or just go into full sobbing mode right in the restaurant, leaving you with your jaw on the floor. Silently, you wish the earth would just open up and swallow you whole. Narcissists are very good at incorporating overreacting with setting you up. They will compare your and their actions or triangulate your reactions with someone else's. Say you accidentally break a glass. They may comfort you and tell you it is nothing and accidents happen and not to worry about it. Then they somehow accidentally do not notice your cell phone is in your light 
fleece jacket when they randomly decide to wash the jacket for you while you are fixing something for them. When you realize your cell phone is toast and get upset, they go in full sobbing mode and cry how it was an accident and they just wanted to be nice. Now you get blamed for not appreciating them being nice to you and you get reminded that when you broke their glass, they were not even angry. So how can you be so mean to them when it was only an accident? Or they may triangulate you with other people by saying you allow the people at work or your family to misuse you. But when they make a little mistake, you get upset. The thing that makes overreacting work is not just that they react over the top, but the fear you have of not knowing when and how they will react. You not knowing how they will react to anything you say or do will take so much mental power from you that you may become unproductive. The fear of embarrassment or of upsetting them will drain the joy from you because you'll be so worried when you go out that they may at any moment just spontaneously combust. You fear mentioning anything just in case they go supernova by taking you too literally or twisting your words. Even a sideways glance can be turned into a full argument that will send Ares the god of war running for cover. They are like walking nitroglycerine packs, ready to blow everything around them to smithereens at the slightest nudge. It is extremely difficult to deal with such a person as they will just try different ways to overreact or twist your words, totally ignoring their tantrums or sometimes punishing them for outbursts may at times help, but it is a hit and miss game. You can pick every fight carefully and still lose each one and the war. When you go through your head of how you are going to present information to someone in a way that they will not overreact or twist your words, you know you have a problem. When you spend hours running arguments and counterpoints in your head to assess an upcoming conversation and all possible ways it can go wrong, you are wasting valuable mental power you could have used to progress in life yourself. You are also wasting a lot of energy dealing with the blow ups or crashes when they decide it is time to have some fun. This technique is especially disempowering for you. When you try to talk about any of their behaviors, they just go into overreact mode. Not only can you not get any of your points across, but you end up being blamed for all kinds of things and may walk away more traumatized than you were. In the end, you may walk around with a constant knot in your stomach from fear of what are they going to do or say next. Going out in public can be a nightmare for you. And all the while you waste away or go backwards in life as you spend all your energy just thinking of what they might do or say next. And you may start to feel guilty for upsetting them. Especially if they use that as an excuse for why they lost their job or are so ill. It is your constant criticism of them that caused them to be fired or not to be able to work. It is your disapproval of them or your controlling that makes them so insecure and that's why they are too afraid to study or get a job. They cannot eat healthy because you make them too emotional because they are too afraid of what you are next going to say or criticize about them. While you are afraid of how they will react, they blame you for all their problems because they claim to be afraid of what you will next criticize about them. That then gives them so much power that they can do anything they want and if you just dare look funny at them, they claim you are again judging them. Maybe you say, honey, are you sure you should have 12 beers? The response may be, if you did not complain so much, I would not need 12 beers to calm my emotions. Or you could say, honey, are you sure you should have 6 hamburgers? The response may be, if you were not so controlling and critical of everything I do, I would not be so emotional that I need six hamburgers. Even if you do nothing, you will still be blamed for it, for not caring. Such as, you do not even try to stop me drinking 12 beers, you care nothing for me. Or, you do not even try to stop me eating six hamburgers, I thought you loved me and wanted me to be pretty and healthy. Sadly, in many cases you cannot win with a person like this, nor can you change them. At best, you may have a miserable relationship. At worst, you may develop all kinds of illnesses from stress and die a slow, lonely death. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. To know more about the narcissist in your life, see my book 21 Types of Narcissists. To help you deal with your anger towards a narcissist as well as healing from narcissistic abuse, 
see my book Shine Again. Links are in the description below. If you'd like to support this channel, follow the PayPal link in the description. Thank you.